Hey, Foot Clan, before we start today's show, I want to thank the sponsor, Avast. You've heard us talking about Avast for weeks now, the global leader in digital security. Keep your PC safe. Keep your Macs safe. Keep your phones going at full capacity at Avast.com. You can check out everything that they have to offer. Like I said, the global leader, 400 million people trust what Avast is doing to protect them from all kinds of cyber threats. Go to Avast.com, A-V-A-S-T dot com. Hi, this is Eric Dixon, NFL Hall of Famer, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from the FantasyJocks.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Woo! I I'm, I'm starting the show today. I know who's not. Yeah, I knew he wouldn't, so I was jumping in here. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. His his head is resting on his microphone. He is crestfallen. He is overwhelmed by sadness. I'm not a happy man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I you know what I did last night after uh, pride after I wiped the tears away. You cried in the shower. Googled ways to end it all. <laughs> I, wa- I watched Braveheart. Did you really? You darn right I did. Oh, my God. I needed something good in the Braveheart world. Braveheart was your pick-me-up? <laughs> it was just, I found it on TV. And let me just say this as a quick aside. I, this, has, this is the worst opening to a show ever. Um, <laughs> Braveheart should not be on regular TV where there's commercials. I that's was going to say just that. Just every time. That's You're a th- in the middle of a battle and they go to commercial. What are you doing? That's a three-hour movie stretched out to five. There should be a Braveheart channel that loops it with, there, without commercials. There you go. Just give me commercials in between. You know, every three hours, you can give me a couple commercials. Um. <laughs> well, well, we'll get into last night's game and all of the implications for you out there, as well as Jason Moore at Jason FFL. Very verified and very sad. Welcome to the podcast. We have our waiver wire show today, as well as full stream ahead. So we'll give you our streaming quarterback options for week 13. And uh, we're two thirds excited to be here. No, Jason's excited to be here. He's just he's just wearing on his sleeve what fantasy owners do. This time of year, you uh, you know you you have a hard time with these kind of losses. There's only one <clears throat> champion in every league, and in our league of record, it will not be me this year. I cannot. You will not double champion. Yeah, you will not back to back. Which, um, you know. The league was the league's happy about that. Oh, the league is thrilled, and I hate I hate all <laughs> of you. There's been a hashtag nevermore. <laughs> yeah, for a long for time. For the whole season. Yeah. <laughs> Not it's it's uh it's no good. And so, you know the worst part about it and Oh, there are a lot. Oh, there are so many. I mean, I, I had that full tilt loss a couple weeks ago where I could have made five different moves to win and I lost by like a point and I'd still be in it. But the worst thing uh is well there's I don't know which one is worse. There's two things that come to mind that are just atrocious. You one is the fact that I was five and two. I was leading the league. I was playoff bound. I was a championship contender, and I put my team over the top by trading away, you know, Larry Fitzgerald and Delaney Walker and some pieces and some draft picks to pick up Brandon Marshall and Greg Olson. Greg Olson, who was averaging 16 fantasy points a game when I got him, and he averaged five for me the rest of the way and crapped my team lost five in a row and also the worst part is the fact that i played against you uh andy and i i picked up carson palmer and tyrod taylor Tyrod Taylor to keep him away from me so i would be stuck with colin kaepernick Kaepernick and i would have won oh i hate he's uh (laughs) there you just got a small glimpse into what the morning's been like and what the afternoon will be like for us here at the fantasy footballers so that answers my quick question of the day of, is Jason okay? Let's follow that up with Monday. No, no, he's not. No, he's not. Let's follow that up with the Monday Night Football recap. The Green Bay Packers beat the Philadelphia Eagles 27-13 to last night. It was uh, somewhat of a clinic for Aaron Rodgers being able to just – the quick passes, diagnosing the defense, and the time of possession. Here's the solution for the Green Bay defense to have success. Don't go on the field. And mm. that's what Green Bay figured out how to do. Long, methodical. That last drive was over eight minutes, pass by pass. With thir- no running game, too. Third down pickups. Yeah, no running game. Aaron Rodgers, 30 for 39 uh, for 313 and two. 
James Starks, as Mike alluded to, did not have a good game. Kristen Michael only got one carry. Average four yards, America. Uh, Devontae Adams, Jason's nemesis now. And the, uh, five would, for 113 and two touchdowns we in need an to efficient point out. game. We need to point out, because uh, I, I believe I kind of took over the mantle as, as known on the social media as the one who disliked Devontae Adams at the beginning of the year. Jason was the original. Jason was the OG driver of the Devontae Adams anti band movement. Yes. Devontae and, Adams did stink. He was terrible last year. I, yes, I tweeted he was. out um I, I retweeted something on Twitter about how how bad he was last year and how good he's been this year in in fantasy. So uh, I I give my congratulations to Devontae Adams and and he is a good wide receiver 3 for your team where when, two. When, sure. Yeah, he's and, the two. Uh, he he he's is a, I mean, the two for since, sure. Since week 6 uh, he's in the top uh, five in fantasy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he is definitely the the second best guy there. I'm just saying from a you know a, a defensive perspective. I guess now you do even treat him like the two. But generally, if I was the opposing coach, I'd be focusing on Randall Cobb. Um, yeah. I mean, Adams made the most of six targets with five catches, one thirteen, and two touchdowns. Probably the most efficient five catches we've seen this year. Starks would have had an okay game if he didn't get vultured by the fullback on a one-yard touchdown. Ripkowski. Because uh, Starks had five catches, even though he was only 17 for 41 on the ground. Jordy Nelson, eight for 91, gave you a good game, even though he didn't get in the end zone. On the other side of the ball, Nelson Aguilar was inactive. So he was gone. Um, you already had Jordan Matthews. Well, Jordan Matthews. Get injured in this game. Yeah, he came out kind of on fire there for a little bit, but injured the ankle. Came back in the second half for, I believe, a two-yard catch and then was out for the rest of the game. Well, before he went out, when, when the game started and Nelson Aguilar was was not out there, you saw that the clear benefactor yes. to me was actually Doriel Green Beckham. Yes. He was extremely involved. He is Amazing first drive. Just kind of died after that. Four, it, four catches on the first drive. Yeah, so uh, to me, uh, obviously, this is a waiver show about who to pick up, who can do whatever we've seen them doing and go forward. He's a guy, to me, that has the talent, the skill set, and a reason now to believe, oh, man, he, he could actually be the legitimate, you know, uh, number one for the team. And so we'll I talk don't know, about him in a bit. I don't know when we're going to see Aguilar again. You should he, see him never. They said he's seeing a sport. You shouldn't see him never? <laughs> no, I said you should see oh, him okay. never. He's seeing a sports psychologist about the drops. Yeah. That's where he's at. Um, a reminder to everybody out there, our fantasy community at jointhefoot.com. We have our live stream today at uh, We're doing it live. 6 Eastern time. So we'll be on there answering questions on the live stream. You can check that out at jointhefoot.com. That's also where you can uh, join over 3,000 other members of our community. You get an extra episode every single Thursday. We're a year-round fantasy community, so you can get involved Um you know, even if your team is not in the playoff hunt anymore, this is what Mike was talking about yesterday about the time of year to start paying. You know, a lot of the times fantasy owners, we miss the last five weeks of the year. If you've disconnected, like if you're not in the playoffs, or even if you are, the last couple weeks might not matter for a lot of different fantasy players because you're not paying attention to trades and things. This is a great time to get right for next season and get started on that process. We'll be with you every step of the way year round. Uh, so check that out at jointhefoot.com. Visit our website, thefantasyfootballers.com, and we'll get your team right and ready for the playoffs. So let's go ahead and get into the news. News and notes from around the league. It was the week of dislocated fingers. We already know about uh, Mr. De uh, Derek Carr. Had there was an update on Derek Carr. It was dislocated in two places. Yeah, if you saw the, the picture, yeah. it didn't look good. did it, not look good. It looked like a snake. Yeah, right, with your finger, it does. It normally looks like a finger. <laughs> um, David Johnson dislocated a finger against Atlanta. Will be fine for week 13. Good news for David Johnson owners. Stefan Diggs returned to practice on Monday. That's uh, great. If he's back Monday, he should be playing again. Right, and if he's back, you start him yes. because he's been really good in this new uh, West Coast system. Chuck Pagano is optimistic about T.Y. Hilton, or as I call him, Ty. <laughs> On, a, on only, accident. Only a good friends call him Ty. Only good friends call Yeah, he, he likes to go by that. Because um, he, he hurt his back during yeah. the game. Got Week 13, out. plays Monday night, gets an extra day of rest. I think he'll play. 
Uh, yeah, but it, so if you're counting on T.Y. Hilton as I am, I got to figure out a option here. Uh, if you can grab Dorsett as a wide receiver handcuff off yeah, the waiver wire, not a bad idea. He could give you a nice because uh, with Andrew Luck back, Dorsett has some value if Hilton was to miss. Mike McCoy said Tyrell Williams is quote good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Mike. So that's good. He should play. Todd Bowles will stick with Ryan Fitzpatrick. You know, well, I've did, heard. Did he say we're going to stick with him or we are stuck with him? Ooh, uh, well I thought you were going to say stick it to him. <laughs> No, that was <laughs> yeah, that was well done, Mike. Thank and you. I believe stuck it is with both. him. Um, <laughs> it, is this more pro Ryan Fitzpatrick or anti Hackenberg and Petty? It's, it's definitely more anti Hackenberg and it has Petty to be at this point. Because if if they thought that they could do anything with them other than embarrass themselves, they would. I don't even think they're going for victories <laughs> right now. They just don't want to embarrass themselves. It definitely speaks poorly of those two guys, especially in a year where you have so many quarterbacks in the draft class that look better than you expected. Um, last two bits of news. Hugh Jackson said Gary Barnage tweaked his knee. Maybe that's why some of that production was down last game. RG3 was cleared for contact. He's coming. Contact has never been friendly to RG3. <laughs> that's, that's very In general, true. right? So week 14, I expect he'll be the starter. They're, um, they're on bye week this week. I'll, I'll bet you he comes back and starts. He needs reps if they if they think he's any part of their future. If you're in a two-quarterback league, he's worth picking up right now because I think in a two-quarterback league, yeah, oh, week yes. 14, and he's probably on your waivers right now. Now, before we get into the waivers, which we're starting right now, for some reason, maybe it was the holiday, maybe it's all the turkey and the cranberry sauce and the pumpkin pie, I forgot one of the most important pieces of the show, and I've got to get to it right now. Mike. How's the verification? I've given coming? up. I've gi I've given up. Not verified? No, nope, it never never will be. And that I will. You know what? Oh, are I like, you are you flipping the I script? I like it like that. That's <laughs> All right. Liar. I'm a renegade. Okay. Yeah. I can't wait till you're verified. Now. No, uh, it's not going to happen. This is one of those things where he's going to go rebel against it. <laughs> he's just hoping. And the Twitter second is it happens, listening. he's going to be glowing and freaking out. Nope. I'm going to. As soon as I are you going to deny your own verification? You're darn right. <laughs> gonna unfollow the <laughs> at verification person oh my goodness all right let's move on put me in coach all right let's talk waiver pickups for week 13 remember the browns and titans are on by so you don't get to play any of them if you want points wide receiver pickups uh, on the waiver wire um sammy watkins Still available in over 40% of leagues on ESPN. Far less on Yahoo. About 30% on Yahoo. Went three for 80 in this last game. You have to imagine the snap counts will rise for Sammy Watkins. I believe he played something like 45% of snaps. Yeah. He, he's, so that's great production on that snap count. He's the clear must own here. I mean, if he's on your waivers, there's nobody else that's like him. He is the guaranteed one on his team. He's more talented than all but seven or eight wide receivers in the league and he's needed for his team right now as as Robert Woods and some of the other wide receivers are ailing clearly the guy to pick up probably owned in most competitive leagues. but if, so. if he's available unload all the fab you have on Sammy yep because he I, could I, help I, you. hopefully you follow uh you know us on Twitter because th this last week I I tweeted out I saw that he was only owned in 50 percent of leagues and I was like, go get him now. What are yeah. you doing with your life? I'm going to give you guys some wide receiver names that are owned in under 40% uh, of leagues. And you guys let me know your priority on them. And then we'll get into some of the completely unowned guys. I like it. But uh, Tyreek Hill, 26%. Tyler Boyd, 35%. Quincy Inunua is about 40%. You can kind of get into maybe the Will Fuller range, which is about 45%. Those four guys, Hill, we know, three touchdowns, big week. Tyler Boyd, 5 for 62. And Noonwall was 5 for 109. How would you guys rank these rest of season? You can kind of see their matchups gonna, here. I think I'm going to surprise you two here. Uh, I'm going to go with Quincy Anunwa as my number one pickup. Hmm. On the season, he has been good. He had a, he had a lull. Sure. No, he, he had a yeah. lull while Ryan Fitzpatrick <clears throat> was stinking it up. But he had a great game last week. And now his schedule going forward, he plays in Indianapolis. Oh, then yeah. he goes on the road to San Francisco and Miami. That That's a winnable matchup. Mm -hmm. He looked good this last week. I would put him at the top of that list. Um, who, who's your top, Mike? The top uh, from those guys, uh, I was actually looking, so I didn't – if you didn't – I don't know if you mentioned it, but Taylor Gabriel, 
I think of this list is my top target. Well, we're talking about the the four. I'm going to get into the barely owned guys. Oh, I apologize. But of, the, me- of the four guys that were around 40% or less, Hill, Boyd, Anunwa, and Fuller, which do you like? Uh, I'll pr- Cause I, I'm with Jason on Anunwa, by the way. If he's available in your league, I love the flash of Hill, but Hill, you're going to need him to make a big play. Yes. I was, I was going to – because I was looking up Hill's snap percentages when, when you were talking, and, I mean – even uh, this monster game this last week, he was only in in about 68% of snaps. He's in a low-volume offense. Yes, he's Tyreek the Freak, uh, Mystique Shashik, whatever. <laughs> you can go on and on. But when Jeremy Macklin was playing, he's a guy who was getting on the field for less than 30% of the snaps. We don't know if Jeremy Macklin will be back, but if he is, it, I, I think you immediately relegate Tyreek Hill to a lower snap percentage. He can give you those big plays. But the guy I was talking about, like Taylor Gabriel, who is going to be lower percentage snaps, but a freak athlete, I'll take the one who's on the high-powered offense over Tyreek Hill. Right? I would rate those out of those four. I'd go a Noonwa Hill and then uh, Boyd Fuller. I would go I, a Noonwa Boyd okay. Hill Fuller. Yeah, for me, I you know I understand what you're saying about Macklin, but with certain players when they're when they're young and they break out. You're not going to go back to the relegated snap percentages. You don't do that to a weapon. You don't, well, you don't take a guy who's slowly breaking out, sure. and then you get weapons back, and he just isn't on the field anymore. So I And his matchups are great. Atlanta, Oakland, Tennessee for the next three weeks. So for me, that makes him the second guy behind Anunwa. So so here's a guy that people are going to wonder. We've, we've talked about these guys that are owning 40% of leagues. Now, where does, in that list, Marquise Wilson fit into you two? With you, the 8 and 125 that yeah, he put up yeah, last week? 8 for one. 25 uh, Matt Barkley looked surprisingly competent you have a team in the Chicago Bears that are pretty much almost guaranteed a game script like this every game where they're going to have to just keep throwing the ball in the second half to play keep up I mean the team is just decimated by injuries look at those matchups too oh yeah the San Francisco Detroit Green Bay Washington I mean that's that's an incredible schedule happening for for Marquise Wilson he's a guy who I think he is a a he's pretty close to a must pickup for me I don't know if I'm going to play him right away but you wonder if even San Francisco so uh Eddie Royal only had one catch um you had Cam Meredith only had two Bellamy had four and then Wilson had this big game you have to wonder if you're seeing that backup backup. I was going to say the third quarterback goes to the, the third wide receiver. Yeah, and I, I agree he's probably a must pick up because this kind of a production, maybe they have that connection. I'm still not, it, you know, it could still be Meredith next game. It could still be Bellamy or Royal next game. But I, I would say he's worth a flyer for sure. Other guys barely owned. Taylor Gabriel. Pick he's obviously up. a huge thing. I like him. Malcolm Mitchell. Yeah, Ma- and Malcolm Mitchell, I talked about Great offense. As the rising star, he is still behind Hogan. But like Andy was saying, if, if a young player, if they're starting to break out, and Malcolm Mitchell could be that guy for the Patriots, they like him. They, I, the Tommy B loves himself Malcolm Mitchell. We saw Brandon LaFell be very successful in that role for the Patriots offense. So if Malcolm Mitchell, he's a must pick up for me. I, like I, I don't know if I'm playing him this particular week but he's a must pick up watch what they're doing with his snap percentages because for your your playoffs if all of a sudden he usurps chris hogan he becomes that weekly must play wide receiver three if these guys are available in your league some last names at wide receiver if for some reason they're there kenny Britt, another good game he's only available in about 40 percent of leagues Devontae parker currently only available in about uh 38% 38% of leagues, only 25% on Yahoo. But if Devontae Parker's there, he uh, he had a touchdown overturn, still had a decent game. Um, I think those are the big names to mention Dor- right now. We we said it earlier, but since we're talking wide receivers, Doriel Green Beckham, I, I think he should be picked up as well. I expect he will be <clears throat> the one. Let me ask you this. did you Were you impressed with Carson Wentz last night? I'm impressed with his running ability. I think Carson Wentz has impressed me on the season as a whole for what my expectations were for a rookie, uh, but he doesn't strike me as a guy this season that's going to be able to put up prolific fantasy numbers for him or for his other wide receiver targets. Okay. 
Let's talk about some running backs. A huge disappointment last night was Wendell Smallwood. Yeah. Are you still signing him on waiver wire? Off yeah, the waivers? I'm still going to sign him because there is production to be had for the Philadelphia Eagles running backs, and you just don't know who it's going to be. And I, we, I really thought it would be Wendell Smallwood. Uh, we saw the prime opportunity of Wendell Smallwood on the one, and all they did had to do was just just tap it in, just <laughs> tap it in. Tap, tap, and instead, tap they in. have they run this play action pass, and Wentz has to scramble all over the place. Eventually, sneaks it in himself. Just, just poorly handled by Doug Peterson. Anytime I love a- it. I love that it's poorly handled. <laughs> they the scored a scores. touchdown. Poorly I knew handled. that. I was going to make fun of you, and you went even further to say how bad that play was. Oh, no, was no, no, a, no. The, such the, a bad touchdown. The play on the field was, was great. I'm just saying it was poorly handled by Doug Peterson. Just tap it in, Doug Peterson. <laughs> tap it in with your fantasy player. Look. All right. <laughs> yeah, the one who's on my roster, of course. Hey, Before we get into the, the rest of the running backs, want to thank our sponsor, Avast. <laughs> Look, Avast. I mean, that, that giveaway's uh, almost done now. Sure. Yeah, Avast is do, working with us. They've partnered with us for a giveaway at footclangiveaway.com. This is the last day to get in on that. So check that out and join all the other people in the contest with the global leader in digital security. We're all playing games on the PCs. We're overwatching. And you know who's watching my computer? Avast. Avast. They're keeping me safe from all the... The cyber bullies with their malwares and their sneaky wares and their worms and their germs not coming into my PC. Not happening because of Vast is protecting me with more than 400 million people joining me. You got to have protection from the viruses. Like we said, it's the last day of the giveaway. And here's a big park for Avast. We got to focus on this. They are lightweight. You unlike us, they are lightweight. <laughs> they, unlike us, they're lightweight. Uh, you don't want an antivirus bogging you down like a virus <laughs> like yeah you don't yeah you don't want your antivirus to essentially be acting like the virus and avast is not going to do that because they're lightweight they keep you going full speed while not bogging down your system and they're always staying up to date on the latest threats and we talked about the phones they have apps that will keep your phones running at lightning speed at optimal speed this is what you want from all of your electronics so check out avast.com that's a v a s t dot com and we also want to tell you about indochino remind everyone about these incredible suits at indochino even though you don't feel good you can look good is that what you're saying i you know i should have came in in my indochino suit you i would have felt uh, like a million bucks i do i feel like a million bucks when wow. i wear my indochino suit i i look i i have a couple of suits you know every every guy out there needs a suit for wh- whatever occasion it is you know you even need a suit. me even your own uh, fantasy funeral yeah you <laughs> must Come on. So you need a suit, you know, whether it's, you know, to go to work in if the, if that's your job or or you know to go to the wedding, to go to the funeral, to go to whatever. But the difference between buying a suit off a rack that doesn't fit you and getting a tailored custom-made suit is incredible. I had no idea until I got this suit. I've never had clothes fit me apparently correctly. Uh the the Indochino suit it was absolute. It's so easy to get. It's so easy to get fit right. You can visit Indochino.com or drop by any one of their nine North American showrooms. You pick from hundreds of fabrics and patterns. You can customize every every piece of it. You submit your body measurements and you kick back, relax, and you get the best, most stylish suit. Here's the thing: this week, Foot Clan, you can get any premium Indi- Indochino suit for three hundred and eighty nine bucks. These are eight hundred dollar suits. So if you've ever needed one, now is the best time. You just need to use the promo code FOOTBALLERS at checkout. That's like 50% off of these made-to-measure premium suits. So visit Indochino.com, enter the promo code FOOTBALLER for any premium suit for $389, and get ready to look like a million bucks with Indochino. All right, let's get back to the running backs. Uh, we talked about Smallwood. Here's some guys that I'm going to bring up. You tell me who you like the most. Obviously, a thin position, right? A lot of what you're doing with running backs right now, especially if you're in the playoff hunt, you're probably not hunting for a, a, an RB1 or an RB2. You're looking for depth. You're looking for that emergency play. You're looking to handcuff your starters. Jason made the point this morning. He looked at Alfred Morris, and it was incomprehensible. He's only owned in 16% of leagues because uh, – you know Ezekiel who's owned Elliott? in hundred percent? Yeah, he's owned in a hundred percent. Zeke and every Zeke owner should have. I mean, it's just you. You are 
You are fantasy stupid. You're, dance, you're <laughs> if dancing you have with Zeke, the devil. If you have Zeke and you don't have Alf. Yeah. Because Alf's looked great in every opportunity he's had. Because that offensive line is, is great. amazing. So that's what you're doing. So the only name that jumps out to me as a maybe I'll be able to start him in my playoff run if I need to. Maybe Kenneth Dixon. Yeah. Oh, really? Because yeah. Ken, yeah. Kenneth Dixon's available in 75% of leagues. Sure. And he, he did out-snap Terrence West, and he had a productive fantasy week. This is not planning on it, but at least you have the – it's not just a handcuff. It's not just a backup. Dixon's had a good week. If they start to give him full workload two weeks from now, taking on New England or Philly, maybe he's the guy. Yeah. yeah. Now, you probably thought I was going to say James Starks. I but did. Starks is owned in 60% of leagues. Uh, 70% in Yahoo, so I don't think he's somebody that we can hone in on as a target. I, I, I agree. I mean, when you look at ownership percentages, he's probably not available, but I would I would think Starks has – he already has the path. So if he is available and you needed a starter, I agree. Starks is yeah. the clear All things winner. being equal, he's definitely the winner. All right, so we got Starks. We've got Kenneth Dixon. Those two guys are great. But now let's go a little deeper, look at some other running backs and say, what you know, how do you order it between your Matt Asiata's? Your Charles Sims, who is going to be able to be back uh, in two weeks. Yeah, very soon. Uh, Adrian Peterson. Hey, hey. It's R thin. Rex Burkett. It's It's thin this week. To me, it's Smallwood, Kenneth Dixon, and, and James Starks, if he's available. And then it's, it's handcuffs. And we should mention D'Angelo Williams is supposed to be back uh, if you had dropped him, which – was the the was the play was the smart play to just drop him because we weren't sure he was going to be back. It's reported now he should be back next week. So if you are the Le'Veon Bell owner, I would scoop him up. I'd highly recommend that. Yeah, you, you've got another player out there that's you know uh, available in over half of leagues that I think is a somewhat startable guy who is also a great handcuff, and that's Bilal Powell. Um, you know he has basically every three weeks he has a full starter fantasy caliber finish and in the meantime he puts up a couple of points but if you're the Matt Forte owner I would certainly look to him what are the other what, what what do you guys make of the Derrick Henry news from today the short yardage news? Mike Malarkey came out and said they've talked about using Henry more in short yardage situations is this a scary thing for DeMarco Murray owners for the playoffs yeah, it's I wouldn't I'm not gonna go DEFCON three wait is it is it higher worse or lower better higher is worse all right, so I'm not going DEFCON 2 on this, <laughs> but it's it's troublesome. It's definitely troublesome, and especially you have to sit and toil in that bye week. Well, it, with this news coming out saying, hey, we're going to work on this, they have an entire week of practice, two weeks of practice to start working him into that role. If you're going to lose those DeMarco Murray goal line touchdowns right in your fantasy playoffs, that stinks. I have been as impressed by Derrick Henry – as I have been by any player in the NFL this year, rookie wise, he has impressed me as much as Zeke. Just he has, you know, a minuscule opportunity by comparison. But when you watch him and what he's capable of doing in the NFL, uh, he's he's electric. So he is a guy that he's electric. Boogie boogie boogie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's, he's a, <laughs> you know, he's another guy that I mean, if you're a Demarco Murray owner. He should be – DeMarco's owned in 100% of leagues. I think Derrick Henry should be owned in 100% of leagues now that he's healthy. He's back. It's tough to pick him up on a bye week, but it's worth it if you're the DeMarco owner. Shane Vereen? Oh, no. No. Okay. no. Come on. I was just – he needed to be brought up. The way a, that you said that there is exactly how you said it when he was <laughs> healthy for the past two years, which is like, Shane Vereen, the question mark? Um, and I'll, I'll say this. I want to throw out I, – I said that I was going to talk about him a little bit. But I do think that there is a clear handcuff right now for Lamar Miller. Now, Lamar Miller's ankle appears to be okay, and he's fine. And if Lamar Miller is, is, is on the field, Akeem Hunt is not going to be doing anything worthy of being fantasy relevant. But if Lamar Miller went down, it is not Alfred Blue. I am very confident that Akeem Hunt is the guy that you want to own there. And so if Lamar went down, Akeem Hunt would be a startable fantasy asset and so if you want to handcuff him, if you've got Lamar, that's the guy to do it. Akeem with. Hunt's really good at getting first downs that the referees decide aren't first downs. Oh, man, he's great at that. Uh, um, tight ends, you guys want to move on? Yeah, let's move on to let's tight ends. Let's talk about tight end. Look, you might very well win your championship with tight ends and defense. 
because you're probably streaming those positions. And so you having the advantage of discussing that beforehand, putting in these waiver wire claims. Yeah, I know who you're not going to win your championship with. That's Greg freaking Olson. <laughs> I'm buying a Greg Olson signed jersey from Pristine Auction to burn. Oh, oh we're going we're gonna to have, oh. have a whole deal. You know what? We are not. You might on your own. <laughs> and, right. and you mock me for saying Greg Olson owners probably wish that Derek Anderson was the quarterback right now. Uh, that, uh, come on, Derek. You know, it is such a difficult thing to trade for. You did both of the. I'm going to use you as a case study in sadness. No, in in you traded for the Denver defense and for Greg Olson. Yep. Two guys that and, and I do not blame you at all. Those are great pickups. But once you did that, you had to start at D named Denver and you had to start a tight end named Olson. You couldn't play the matchups. You couldn't stream. And so you see the pluses and minuses of both. Now, a lot of the time, that works out in your favor, right? You go get a great tight end, and that's an advantage. Yeah, Denver's, this case, it just didn't work out. Denver's been fine for me, but Greg Olson has just terrorized my team. <laughs> just I From mean, the inside. From the inside out. He's a Double par- agent. A parasite. <laughs> a- Hashtag nevermore. Uh, all um, right, so Cameron Bright. He's on this list. Every, how does this keep happening? It, it, that, because because a, I, I I want him and don't want him at the same time every week. Oh, uh, I, I do he's want been him. Very solid. When you when you've got a guy that makes this list every single week and he's worth picking up and he does enough this many times at a position where even the superstars lay an egg from time to time. You know, Cameron Brait might have a bad game, but he is involved enough. He was four for forty nine this last week. He had a touchdown that was called back. He's had he's just he's a he's a legitimate red zone weapon for Jameis Winston and their schedule coming up. We've talked about Tampa Bay schedule is great. San Diego, New Orleans, Dallas, New Orleans, New Orleans, Dallas, New Orleans. We saw what Jordan Reed did to Dallas. We know what can happen in New Orleans games. This I mean, this blows my mind that Cameron Brait is not owned in more leagues because if he's available and you're streaming the Barfy tight ends, get ready for those playoffs with Cameron Brait. Um, another guy who I think has just an excellent playoff schedule for the tight end position. It does not get better than CJ Fedorowicz, Green Bay, Indianapolis, Jacksonville, Cincinnati, all four of those teams are susceptible to the tight end. And CJ Fedorowicz has been involved. He's available in the majority of leagues. You know, if you don't have a good tight end, if you're, you know, if you're streaming back and forth, I think you can kind of go, okay, I, I can just roll him out with these matchups and not have to every week be uh, burning your waiver priority, burning fab, doing those things because the solid schedule throughout the entirety of the playoffs. Okay. Um, any other names that you guys think are worth discussing? I was disappointed, obviously, with Will Ty. We hope that maybe he was more involved last week. He wasn't, only two for 12. If you're the Jordan Reed owner, you you sh- you must add Vernon Davis. Well, I was going to say, as the Jordan Reed owner, I was considering him – a must add, but I want to throw out this name here. I'm going to read you some scoring from our half point PPR league 17.9, 7, 12.1, 8. Those are the last four Is weeks. That Gresham? That's Vance McDonald. Oh, okay. We talk about how Kaepernick's been playing great football, for at least for fantasy purposes. Vance McDonald has been an extreme benefactor. He's His lowest yardage of the last four weeks is 46 yards, and he had a touchdown in that game. If Vance McDonald and, has been turning it on here, and he uh, always, it's directly proportional to good quarterback play. Yes. Yeah. And, he gets, and, and by just in case you're curious, I was referring to Colin Kaepernick <laughs> <laughs> over Blaine Gabbert. Uh, no, I, I, I do like that. Coming into this season, we were very high on Vance McDonald. He has the talent to do it. Um, the opportunity in the Chip Kelly offense is, is a good one. It's not a huge volume position for them. I mean, it, the most receptions he's had on the on the season is four, so that tempers my expectations. But he's a personally. big play guy. But I mean, it, I agree. He's certainly a big play guy. Even with Gabbard, he had that seventy-five yard touchdown in week two. Um, so it, he is a big play, high upside guy. For me, I'd rather have the big play, high upside guy of, of a Kobe Fleener, who I'm sure is available in a lot of leagues, than a Vance McDonald. And I would rather have. A, a C.J. Fedorowicz where, you know, he's got the chance of a six or seven reception game than Vance McDonald. But but I, you can make the argument. It really is a matter of who are you going up against? Do you need that high, you know, high ceiling type of guy or do you want the high floor? 
All right, defenses to pick up this week. We're talking about streaming for victory here. I really, really like the Cowboys. Love the Cowboys Vikings. defense against the Vikings this week. I think you have uh, upside, right? Uh, Bradford throwing the ball away. Uh, mistakes. You have uh, some safety. I don't think the Vikings are going to be able to light up the Cowboys. You know, there are different thought processes with defenses. They're probably my favorite defense off the waiver wire this week. Yeah, what, do I mean, you, this what is, do you guys think? This is pretty much the hardest week of the season to stream a defense because the Cleveland Browns aren't playing. <laughs> so you can't just pick up whoever's playing them. Um, also, you you know, you've got the Bears who are an offense to me that I would I would be willing to play against. The, but the 49ers, you know, their defense doesn't really yeah. get it done enough. They've so been, I'm not they've sure. They've been better. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure if I love that. I guess you know if I'm going to throw another one out there, maybe the Eagles. They're still owned in the majority of leagues, but they play the Bengals, who obviously are hampered. I mean, losing Geo and losing AJ Green, we saw this last week. They were not able to move the ball the same. Jeremy Hill isn't even 100. percent And I would give you the inverse as well. I think I'm playing the Bengals as of right now against the Eagles because I, I'm just not worried. The game's in Cincy, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm not worried that the Eagles are all gonna all of a sudden just score thirty plus points. And right, the, Carson Wentz. I mean, he started over as a or he started the season as a guy who doesn't turn the ball over. Since then, his touchdown interception ratio has pretty much flipped. All right, we're gonna talk about some streaming quarterback options. Do you have any honorable mention quarterbacks before we get into the streamers? Oh, I just, I wanted to mention again. We're talking about him, Jameis Winston. Yahoo leagues are on top of it. He's owned in 79%, but in ESPN, he's available in 30% of leagues, a quarterback who could potentially, you could ride him through the entire playoff shed schedule. Full stream ahead. Jason, I don't know what your endurance levels are like with the onset depression, the one day depression. So I'm, I'm, about, gonna let, I'm, I'm about to go to sleep. I'm going to let you start. <laughs> Um, well, I've got you, you. You selected a quarterback that makes a lot of people go to sleep. Yes, yes, I did. Yes, I did. This is not a super high ceiling guy, but I think this is a very safe streaming option this week, and that's Alex Smith. He's been a great streamer for years. Unfortunately, he hasn't been running um, a lot this season, which is usually what's what's helped him. But he plays Atlanta, and Atlanta should should be able to score on Kansas City, which most teams lately have not been able to do. Atlanta is still the 32nd against quarterbacks for fantasy football. So if they if Atlanta has a lead, then you put Alex Smith in a position where he has to he has to lead, you know, a, a, an offensive drive and score a touchdown and you get to do it against the Atlanta defense. I think the the game script is going to be one where you're going to get that 20 points out of Alex Smith. You know, he, he, I don't see him throwing a three-touchdown, 300-yard game. No team has been worse against fantasy quarterbacks than the Atlanta Falcons. And that's why I'm going Alex Smith. I will say I, I'm very curious. The only thing I'll, I'll argue with, and it's not really an argument, just curious about Justin Houston <laughs> was amazing. My goodness. Three sacks, played great, before love that he, guy. Before he got hurt mid-game, I mean, I, I don't remember a, a half – where it was just that dominant. It was like, it was honestly the the equivalent of the Denver Broncos playing against Justin Houston. Yeah, like, well, I, it, it was it. And it went both directions because Von Miller was ridiculous. Yeah, too. the second half, it, it um, flipped. Just a reminder for people, when we're giving you a stream, we're looking for low ownership quarterbacks that have good matchups this week. I'm going with Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yes, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Uh -oh. He's at home this week. He had his best game of the year last week with two touchdowns, I think 269 yards, somewhere right around there. He's at home against the 31st-ranked defense against fantasy quarterbacks. So right next to Atlanta is the Indianapolis defense. Andrew Luck should be back. Uh, we know that he'll be able to put up points against New York. I think there's an opportunity here for Fitzpatrick to, what I'll say, Bortles, right? I think he has a chance to oh, uh, get some garbage time points in this matchup. I am personally, I'm going to go out there right now, assuming he goes through my waiver wire tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to play Ryan Fitzpatrick ahead of Cam Newton this week 
in uh in my playoff battle in the listener league. Oh. Now saying that out loud means I probably won't get Ryan Fitzpatrick right now. No, this is what you do. You you look him in the eye. You tell him this is what well, I'm going to do. Listen, I'm telling the listener league. I'm playing Ryan Fitzpatrick. I'm not playing Cam Newton against Seattle in Seattle uh, after a loss. Okay, I just don't want any part of that. I'm playing Ryan Fitzpatrick on Monday night. All right. Sometimes there is a bold move, Cotton. Sometimes, sometimes there is a ripe fruit, and it's right there at at, at hand level, and you snatch it out of the tree. Yeah. It, let's see who who who. Let's see if the listeners can guess who picked their streaming quarterback first. Colin Kaepernick. Look, he's the ripe fruit. Yeah. He low, is low hanging he juicy. Is, he is right now. He is succulent. Okay. All because right. Jason talked about this yesterday. The seventh best fantasy quarterback since taking the job. He's available on the still the vast majority of waivers. Gets to take on Chicago. Uh talking of Jameis Winston as a guy who could uh you can potentially ride him through the playoffs. Colin Kaepernick looks like that as well. What's even better for Colin Kaepernick, it doesn't matter what the matchup is. There's garbage time available for Kaepernick. And rushing yards. And he runs the ball over 100 yards on the ground. That's just unfathomable. I got to put you on the spot here, asking for a friend. Okay. All right. Kaepernick's been on fire. Yes. Andrew Luck's coming off a concussion against the Jets in New York. Oh, my goodness. Do you stay in the flames with, with Kaepernick? Hilton. Possibly out. Yeah. Do you stay in the flames with Kaepernick? I mean, look, last four weeks for Luck, 37, 25, 17, 25. Last four weeks for Kaepernick, 33, 28, 23, 43. What do you do? Oh, that's a good one. I got, I've got, i got my answer. All oh. right, you guys both think about your answer, and on the count of three, I want you to say the last name of the player you'd start. One, two, three, Luck. Kaepernick. Oh, great. <laughs> Yes, we did it, Jason. No help. Wow. <laughs> Isn't this a funny world? We're talking about Kaepernick and Luck in the same sentence, and we can't even come up with the same name. Ron Jaworski would be so proud. So, I w and I'll say this, too. we uh, It didn't work out for, for Jason trying to quarterback block his opponent, but if you have an extra spot on your roster and you're looking forward, I Kaepernick is the kind of guy that I would grab him. <laughs> oh, man. If you were watching the video just now, this is a tough day. Jason is, he put his head down on the desk when he's talking. But anyways, uh, Colin Kaepernick is a guy who I would block or I would pick up just to make sure no one in, in the rest of my league could pick him up. Do you want to, I, I agree. Do you want to close this? <laughs> do you want to close the show out for us, Jason? Uh, yeah. Um, foot clan. If you, uh, if you don't make the playoffs, if you, if you don't win your championship, we're here for you. We're the everyman, and uh, even champs, champs gonna lose sometimes. <laughs> no more champs gonna champ. Oh man, this stinks. Hey, uh, we'll if you, you are the champ, uh, you can always go to fantasyjocks.com, get your trophies. Uh, apparently, I got a trophy promo, to fix because it's going to someone else. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.